You are now watching The Beach. Welcome to the series premiere of Trash or Treasure. This series will be going over games that are considered divisive, mediocre, or just plain bad and determining if they're as notorious as they're made out to be. You guys voted on the first episode, and the overwhelming victory was the battle between Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels versus Super Mario Bros. 2, determining which is the better sequel. Both of these games are a bit divisive to say the least. One reviewer claiming that Mario Teaches Typing is somehow better than Super Mario Bros. 2 because Super Mario Bros. 2 is quote unquote a lie. I'm all for different opinions. I got off Twitter for a reason, but that's a bit absurd, don't you think? I'm sure most of us are aware of the story of Super Mario Bros. 2, but in case you haven't heard it, here's what happened. It was the year 1986. Super Mario Bros. was a massive success, so Nintendo just kept selling Super Mario Bros. because sequels would cannibalize the sales a bit. Okay, that was a joke. Now do you see how ridiculous that argument is for not getting Mario Kart 9? As we're all aware, Super Mario Bros. did indeed get sequels. The first sequel to Super Mario Bros. was Versus Super Mario Bros. It's essentially an arcade adaptation of Super Mario Bros. that's more challenging and has a few new levels, but at its core, it's Super Mario Bros. Then there was Super Mario Bros. Special for Japanese computers developed by Hudson Soft, but that's more of a weird spin-off sort of thing that deserves its own video. During the development of Versus Super Mario Bros., Miyamoto realized how fun it was to create challenging levels. What resulted from this was Super Mario Bros. 2, also known as Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Developed in a measly four months, it did receive more development time than Pokemon Sword and Shield. This is what some considered to be the real Super Mario Bros. 2. It was set and ready to go for a Western release, but after being reviewed by Nintendo of America's game tester, he considered the game punishing and not fun. Gaming was still in a risky position in 1986. Nintendo did not want to alienate players. Atari literally alienated players with E.T. What Nintendo decided to do is leave the lost levels in Japan and create a different sequel for the rest of the world. They did not have the time to make a new 2D Mario game as Super Mario Bros. 3 was in development during that time. What they did is modify an existing game, being Yume Kojo, Doki Doki Panic, and turn it into a Mario game because Nintendo thought American gamers were nothing but idiotic buffoons that couldn't handle the lost levels. You know, I always found it highly offensive and rude that Nintendo assumed that Western players weren't good at playing video games and were apparently stupid. In the meantime, let's get back to gaming. There has been debate over what the true sequel is, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels or Super Mario Bros. 2. Both games are called Super Mario Bros. 2, depending on the region that you're in, so 2-2 two, two on you. There's also been debate over what the better sequel is, so the question is, which is the better game? We're gonna start off with Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels because that came first. Right off the bat, you can certainly tell that this is indeed a Mario game, but there are some differences. There's no multiplayer. You have the option to play as Mario with an average jump height and good traction, or Luigi who can jump higher but has poor traction. This was the first game to give Luigi his trademark characteristics. I mainly play as Luigi, but I do occasionally play as Mario. You can't switch between characters in between levels either, so there's no turning back. But other than that, it's pretty much identical to the first game gameplay-wise. But with the sequel, there has to be something that sets it apart. Gatti di Aforetico. Something different. What did the lost levels do? Crank up the difficulty to 11. Most scale hardness is outdated, because Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is even harder than Diamonds. This game is notorious for how brutally difficult it truly is. Challenge is a good thing, but this game gets to the point where it feels like a prank at times. Most Mario games have their signature power-up. The raccoon suit from Super Mario Bros. 3, the bunny suit from Super Mario Land 2, 
the propeller suit from New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and many others. The Lost Levels only new item is the Poison Mushroom, which is a power down. If you touch it when you're regular Mario, you shrink, and if you touch it when you're small Mario, you will die. There are also backwards warp zones, like one in World 3, sending you back to World 1. Of course, there are the hidden blocks in the most inconvenient places to be the cherry on the difficulty Sunday. There's even wind in some levels. There are actually a few levels after World 8, but to access them, you have to beat the game eight times without warping. That is absolutely insane. But other than the difficulty gimmick, the game is nearly identical to the first game. Now let's head out of Japan and check out the Super Mario Bros. 2 the rest of the world got. Here's an interesting fact. Hong Kong also got the international release of Super Mario Bros. 2, which is interesting because Nintendo has a really bizarre history in Hong Kong where they sold both the Famicom and NES. Thanks, Act Family Home, for the great video on the history of Nintendo in Hong Kong. Unlike the Lost Levels, which is identical to the first game, Super Mario Bros. 2 is the total opposite. Every popular series has a game that is considered the black sheep of the franchise. Donkey Kong 3, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, and of course, Super Mario Bros. 2. This game was directed by Kensuke Tanabe, who is very familiar if you're in a Paper Mario. Did someone say Paper Mario? Not today, buddy, but your turn is coming. Miyamoto did have involvement with the game though. Just like the Lost Levels, there's no multiplayer, but you have the choice of four characters. Mario is the average all-around guy, Luigi is a high jumper but can't pick up veggies that fast, and finally, we now have Princess Peach and Toad playable for the first time. Peach can hover, but is slow to pick up vegetables. Toad is ripped and picks up vegetables very fast, but has a short jump. Where Super Mario Bros. 2 differs the most from the first game is that instead of jumping on enemies, the main mechanic is throwing enemies and vegetables to defeat other enemies. Honestly, I find this mechanic to be even more fun than just stomping on enemies and I'd love to see it return, but that isn't the only difference. Other than a few references to the first game like the Mushroom Star and Koopa Shell, everything else is completely new. Unfortunately, there are no traditional power-ups that the Mario series has been known for. The Fire Flower would have been perfect for this game, as it's all about throwing, though to be fair, it might be a bit overpowered. You also won't find Goombas or Koopas, but instead will find Shy Guys, Sniffets, and don't even get me started on Fanto. That is a freaking stalker. It's a platformer just like the first game, but there's no time limit. This is a great thing, that should have been in every succeeding 2D Mario game. Each level ends with a boss, being either Birdo, or a stronger boss at the end of the world. It's a shame that none of these bosses have returned in a mainline Mario game, and other than Birdo, these characters haven't appeared in any Mario spin-offs. Mouser is perhaps one of the coolest Mario characters. He's a mouse with sunglasses, and just looks cool. Only if his eyes were red and he could shoot lasers out of them like Arnold, he'd be even cooler. The stages are a lot larger and more expansive than they were in Super Mario Bros. There are quite a few vertical platforming sections, in addition to horizontal platforming. Even though Super Mario Bros. 2 is a modification of Doki Doki Panic, it does have some changes. The animations are much smoother, and the audio is better in Super Mario Bros. 2. <laughs> Mario-themed elements like mushrooms and shells were added as well, but most importantly, you can dash, which you couldn't do in Doki Doki Panic. So far we've come to the conclusion that Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is a traditional Mario game, while Super Mario Bros. 2 deviates from the traditional 2D Mario formula. But before we reach the conclusion on which is the real and better sequel, I figured we'd take a look at the remakes of these games. The first time the rest of the world had the chance to play Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels was in Super Mario All-Stars. Not only was the presentation remade, but quality of life improvements were added. The Poison Mushroom is very clearly a Poison Mushroom, unlike in the original. You can also save your progress, and because of how difficult the game is, 
If you get a game over, you just start off from the level you left off on. You can change characters once you start up the game too. And the ridiculous requirement of beating the game 8 times without warping to get to the extra levels is gone too. You just have to beat the game once without warping. It's still challenging, don't get me wrong, but I'm happy Nintendo finally realized gamers outside of Japan were not idiotic buffoons. You know, I'm very happy Nintendo realized that gamers are great outside of Japan. Thus, we finally got Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Here's a toast to Nintendo. Alright, let's play the game. Ah, damn it. Another remake of the game is in Super Mario Bros. Deluxe on the Game Boy Color. It goes under the moniker Super Mario Bros. for super players. It's lacking the extra levels, but remains pretty much the same. The only differences are that Mario and Luigi play identically, the aspect ratio is different to accommodate the Game Boy Color screen, and the poison mushroom clearly looks like a poison mushroom. And you can save your game of course too. It took over 20 years, but the West finally saw an official release of the original Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels on the Wii Virtual Console. It's also on the 3DS, Wii U, Switch, and the Super Mario Bros. 35th Anniversary Game & Watch. So if you want to play a balls hard game and don't mind raging, there are plenty of options. BALLS TO YOU! <laughs> As for Super Mario Bros. 2, it did see a release in Japan under the name Super Mario USA in 1992. I initially thought it was some sort of patriotic 4th of July themed Mario game, but to my disappointment, it's just Super Mario Bros. 2 with a different name. The Super Mario All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. 2 is nearly identical to the original, but with a much better presentation, some quality of life improvements, and the ability to save. But the best remake of Super Mario Bros. 2 is Super Mario Advance. Not only does it have quality of life improvements, but voice acting, new gigantic enemies and items, and extra challenges when you beat the game. But wait, there's more! You're also getting a remake of the original Mario Bros. arcade game. So far we've come to the conclusion that Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is a traditional Mario game, but is unreasonably challenging. Super Mario Bros. 2 on the other hand deviates from a traditional Mario game, but has a better presentation, more expansive levels, and more originality. So what's the real Super Mario Bros. 2? The answer is both of them. It just depends on the region. I've heard some people call Super Mario Bros. 2 a lie and a fake Mario game. No dummy, Super Mario Bros. 2 isn't a fake Mario game. This is a fake Mario game. But what's the better sequel? Who got the better deal? Japan or the rest of the world? I think it's quite obvious who the winner is. The winner is... Versus, versus Super, Super Mario, Mario Bros. Brothers. Okay, I'm just messing with you. The real winner? The, the International, International Super Mario Bros. 2. 2. There are many reasons as to why it's better. The gameplay is far more fun, and the level design is way better. The presentation is superior in every way. Finally, it left a lasting impact on the Mario series, with characters such as Shy Guys, Bob-Bombs, Pokies, Birdo, and quite a few others appearing as recurring characters. Regardless of it being a modification of Doki Doki Panic, it's a much better game. A fantastic game, actually. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is a novelty. Its extreme difficulty is a gimmick, and it's fun to play through. But my main problem with Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is not the difficulty. It's the fact that it's the most derivative, unoriginal Mario game ever made. If Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels was wiped out of existence, what would we lose? Bloopers that can fly, poison mushrooms, Bowser's apparent brother, and maybe Piranha Plants would have stayed green instead of red. But let's say we did get Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels internationally. I can guarantee Doki Doki Panic would have never made it overseas as it was used to promote Fuji's 1987 Dream Factory event. What would have been an obscure game turned into a classic looked back upon fondly by many generations. So there you have it, Super Mario Bros. 2 is indeed the better sequel. And speaking of Mario, did you know that his first games weren't even on Nintendo systems? Tune in to the next episode of Trash or Treasure, where I cover Nintendo games on the Atari 2600. But what do you guys think the better sequel is? Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, or Super Mario Bros. 2? 
Or maybe you think Mario Teach's typing is better than either of them. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching, and keep calm and da-da on.